Hi, and welcome to another tutorial. Tonight, I'm going to be showing you just a triangle twist tessellation. So the triangle twist um, is, it's just a, a unit. Um, so it's just a little module that you can use and you can repeat over and over and combine it with other um, tessellation techniques to make different patterns. Um, I love this. It is one of my favorite and most relaxing things to do. Um, as long as you enjoy folding grids. So tonight I'm going to show you how to fold one of these. Um, tonight I'm going to use a 6... No, hold on. 16. It is a 16 division. 16 division hexagon grid. Or triangle grid cut into a hexagon. So I've got two tutorials on my um, Instagram TV. Um, I should probably put them on YouTube, but I've got two different tutorials on how to fold a, a hexagon out of a square. Um, the first one, the first um, one of those is what I use to fold all of these. Um, so this is a 16 division. I have seen triangle twist tessellation um, tutorials before where they've folded their grid lines this way. So the point into the center. Um, I don't like doing that. Um, I like to fold mine the edge to the center, then half and then half again. Um, and the reason why is because when you get to the edge triangles, if you folded your grid um, that way, these edge bits, uh, let's have a look, um, get very difficult to kind of crumple down without ruining the edges. Um, so I do it this way. The only problem is that it means you you end up you end up with um, extra bits all around um, the the central hexagon that you have to cut off with scissors. I don't mind doing it because it's 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 just nicer. So that was enough of that. Let's get to it. Um, okay, first thing you need to do is know where to put your first triangle twist. So um, what you do to make it uh, have a hexagon in the center of of all of them, you find the center intersection there and you count two points out two intersections out towards one of the corners so that's my center one two and then i isolate that okay so you find that point um then what you do So you do them all in one direction. It doesn't matter which way, you can do it in the other way. Um, if you like, like that, and you just have an intersection. So the trick for getting really clean triangle um, twists um, is putting the right pressure on there. You can do all the other grid lines, and this would be a lot easier, but ain't nobody got time for that. So what I do, um, you need three points um, of pressure. Um, Later on, we'll be using this, but so you put all your points just at the at the uh, that corner, and then you push down kind of at the same time, so like that, um, and it just kind of yeah squashes down. So you want to put pressure on all the points to flatten it down, and that's it. So that's one. And what you do is you move, oh, it's only one. So you move your um, intersection just one point down from the point of that triangle. And again, all in one direction. Okay. And believe it or not, you do that again. All right, so there, there you go. If that happens, which it will, you just got to flatten it back down again. I kind of keep that flat there. Find that intersection. All right. 
right, so this one crosses over that plate over there. Just kind of, you don't want to push down too hard, but just let it stay there. All right, equal pressure. And you, you can't keep them all flat down. They're all kind of off the table. Um, and you just, yeah, push them all flat down. Um, you will, if you've never done this before, they will probably turn out terrible um, the first few times. Fact. Um, takes a, a bit of practice and when to put. And so you'll find that what I like to do is get that, that gap in between them as uniform as possible. That will take you a long time. Don't get frustrated. Keep at it. It is excellent fun. But like everything, it does take a fair bit of practice. So this last one... You're doing two at the same time. All right. Flattens down like this. Okay. Use my handy wooden skewer. And you want to open it up along that crease there. Just like that. All right. And you'll see that you've got two of the intersections at the same time. Now, this is where I use my skewer because I can't stick my finger in there. At this point, you can flatten that along and go like that. There you go. But later, when you've got more, um, as you work your way out, if you've got more um, plates, that becomes very hard. So I'll show you just what I do here. Just use this to put pressure right on that corner, same as I did with my finger. There we go, the central six. And believe it or not, we repeat the exact same thing. Now I like to start in the center. Um, say when I do larger ones, start in the center and just work um, layers around because it's very aesthetically pleasing um, as it goes and yeah fun meditation yep. so to get these corners really well again practice but I just kind of gently just push them out and that way I can flatten them down. If you do just fat finger, they won't look so good. And good paper makes a difference. Um, I'm sorry to say. I mean, of course you can use any paper. Um, but yeah, good... Good Kami paper for this is fantastic. It's nice and thin. Um, and you can get some really clean creases. And so when you do kind of higher density ones, yeah, it becomes easier. The thicker the paper, um, sometimes the, if it's grainy, they, they're not so good at a small size. But something like these, you can do this with them, um, with most stuff. Done. 
All right, this is a good time to point something out. Um, so, in Eric Jird's book um, on origami tessellations, he's got um, a really good um, instructions on doing the triangle twist tessellation. Um, but it's interesting because before I read that book, um, I didn't know you could kind of fold it like um, he pointed out. So what you do is a spread hex tessellation where the um, kind of tiles are like this. So they're layered hexagons coming out. Um, and you can do the entire tessellation at any size in, in these. And then as you go, you can just turn them all into triangle twists. Um, which, and it, it does look cool because you can, you can um, alternate between the two. And so if you're doing something that's that's long, um, you could have a couple of rows of those to break up your triangles, more triangles, and then you can inlay a trifilia um, into the center of it and things. I, the, I, the possibilities, I tell you folks. Um, yeah, it's worth looking into, great fun. Um, yeah, the search for the trifilia tessellation. I do a lot of um, those when I use triangles. Um, on my photos and you can just add them into here cool and from yeah so from here you've got a four um, road hexagon in the middle um, and now we just need to cut those off handy dandy scissors um, I usually don't like um, having to trim things off but as I said Perfection overrides that for me, and this tidies things up nicely. So you can just cut straight along. Careful when you're cutting not to cut into the um, actual triangles, which is easy to do, and I've done many times, and it's annoyed me greatly. So be careful. All right, look at that. Okay, so that is that done. So we used a 16 division grid for this one and you end up with four rows. So doing it in that, um, in that method, you use four grid divisions um, per row um, of triangle twists. So this one was 16, this one here was eight. Um, so you get two rows, eight, 16, 24, and 32. So same size piece of paper, well, same size hexagon um, initially. And then I just divided them into grids. Um, obviously, eight, 16, and 32 are easy to do because it's just in halves. And um, this one I had to measure um, a third and then, then fold it before I cut it down to a hexagon. All right. Um, so I hope you enjoyed that. I look forward to seeing how people go. Um, let me know in the comments if you um, if you folded this. Um, and yeah, happy folding everyone. Until next time.